Tonight we're gonna to talk about one of the most common garnishes in tiki, mint. Why to use it, how to use it, and if you stay to the very end, I'll share a secret with you about how to keep your mint looking fresh till the end of the night. Aloha and welcome back to Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. If you've watched the show for any period of time, you are certain to recognize this Trader Vic's Tiki Mug. It usually sits on the bar top with some mint in it. And that mint that I usually have is from the store. It's this living mint. It's about four or five bucks for this thing. You know, you pull this deal off right here. And I, sometimes I'll just sit it just like that. Just that simple. Other times I'll go to the back of my house where I have like a little mint patch growing. I'll pluck some, stick it in there and try to fluff them up. The problem is at the end of the night, they start getting kind of droopy. At the end of this episode, I will share the secret with you on how to prevent the droopy mint. <laughs> Don't droop yet. So for five bucks, you get this little thing, which is deceptive because it's in a planter. And so you go, yeah, dude, I will just buy this, plant it in my garden, and then I'll have my own mint garden. Oh, how wrong could you possibly be? It says here that you can store this on your countertop for a couple of days, put a little bit of water in it and keep it going but this is not meant to be planted or kept around for a long time. It's hydroponically grown, so unless you have some kind of hydroponic system, which like, then I don't know what you got going on in your, in your spare time. This is kind of a, almost a one use thing. I mean, if you're gonna make cocktails, this'll do maybe two cocktails if you garnish with mint like I do. Conversely, if you go to your local grower's market, you can buy this for about seven bucks. It is a gigantic, a bushel of mint. Look at this, just this handful right here is more than the five bucks over here. So this is probably like $3, maybe two fifty, and you get almost double the mint. I mean, they both smell fresh, but this smells like a little more fresh. First of all, let's talk about why you would or why you should use mint in a cocktail. One of the primary reasons for using mint in a cocktail, besides how great it looks, is that when you put a straw in the glass, or if you don't use a straw at all, when you bring the glass up to your face, you get a whiff of the mint. It's not only visual, but it's also a sensory bouquet. It dates back to 1944 at Trader Vic's in Oakland. I remember it well. It's a half lime shell sunk into your glass to signify an island. And then the other portion is a sprig of mint that sits right next to it, like a palm tree. I mean, you can kind of see that, right? kind of palm tree-like, but you can put mint in just about anything. It's such a great garnish. Okay, I think we should get into now how you should use it. I think we should probably demonstrate that with a cocktail, but before we even get into that, the main thing about mint that a lot of people seem to forget is the smacking of the mint. Now I've traveled across the country to a zillion bars and I've seen how different bartenders release the aromatic oils that are contained within the leaves of the mint plant. I've seen other people on other cocktail shows crush it just like that, like you crush it. I don't like that because then you get this thing where you're like, you really kind of hurt the leaves. I've seen bars where they put the mint in their palm, and smack it, jeez, which is a bit of a mess if you ask me. I mean, it definitely works. I've seen people on the edge of the cocktail, like bad cocktail whacking the cocktail like that and then dusting around it because it leaves the oils on the rim of the glass. This is turning into a mess. So the science behind the whole thing is that when you smack the mint leaves, it bruises them, which causes the cells to break open and release the oils. And then the oils are what give you that incredible scent that when you raise your glass up to your nose, you get this burst of minty freshness. It really is a delight in cocktails, especially tiki cocktails. But really, I think the mint thing endures across all genres of cocksmithing. But here on Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour, you know that we smack the mint, just like that. So you smack the mint like you smack the like button. Go ahead, smack that like button. And a tip for storing mint, I think ideally you would get like a Ziploc bag or something, but I think you could probably keep these things. Ooh, I hate, uh, I don't know. I hate like crunching them up in there. Use a Ziploc bag. This is no solution. Although this is super airtight. I don't like the idea of, of like crunching up my mint like that. And also with the Ziploc, you can like push all the air out, seal it, and you know that no air is getting in there. So this may be airtight. This is not the solution that I would go for. So now that we have a proper introduction into mint, let's put this in a cocktail so I can show you how to garnish a cocktail properly. Let's go to the bar. Okay, so real quickly, I found a Ziploc bag. 
Look at, there's no air in this thing. Well, there's still some air in this thing. What the hell? So I just kind of squeezed out all the air and then zipped it shut. So hopefully that'll last for, I don't know, maybe like four to five days. So we'll see. And then when you bring it back out, you just gotta kind of fluff it back up. Okay, so the cocktail that is most known for the mint garnish is the 1944 Trader Vic's Mai Tai. Now I know we've done that before on the show. The great thing about the Mai Tai is that you can always do versions of that 1944 Mai Tai with different rums, just like a daiquiri. A daiquiri is never the same depending on the white rum that you use. Or, you know, hell, you could use Jamaican rum or a pot still rum or anything you wanna throw in there with lime and sugar. It becomes a daiquiri. Although traditionally it's like white rum. With a Mai Tai, you wanna usually use some kind of Jamaican rum. So in the past, I think we've used Denizen, something like that. Tonight we're gonna to use Appleton 21 and Worthy Park. Very exciting stuff. So let's quickly make a Mai Tai. It is juice of one lime, which really means we're looking for an ounce of lime juice. A quarter ounce of rock candy syrup. Quarter ounce of orgeat. Three quarter ounce of orange curacao. And then an ounce of Worthy Park Jamaican rum, which has a distinctive funky smell to it. It's just a beautiful rum. Not sponsored. Yeah. And Appleton 21. Oh my God, like music to my ears. Technique. We're gonna do a bunch of ice in there and give it a quick shake. Okay, the tin is frosty and cold. This uh, shaker set is from a bar above. If you're interested in this same shaker set, Look at the description below. There's an affiliate link where you can help support the Breezeway Cocktail Hour and get just one of the best shaker sets that I've ever used. Whew. I'm, what am I, out of breath from shaking a cocktail? Pour into a glass. Appropriately Trader Vicks. Top off with some more pebble ice. Then we're gonna garnish with the spent lime shell to signify an island. And now back to what we were talking about before with the mint. Now I like to grab a good clump of mint. The saddest, the saddest mint that I've ever seen in a tiki bar. <laughs> and I swear to God, I've seen this before. This is so gross. I don't even want to put it in my drink. I've seen, I've seen this before. Like who wants to drink that? Don't even put mint in the drink if it's gonna look like that. That is a bummer. That's the weeds that you picked out of your garden. Okay, so on the show, we have a saying, don't skimp the mint. I like to use more mint than you would reasonably normally use. Stay tuned to the very end to find out how you keep your mint looking like this all night long. Seriously, stay tuned. Now what I will do is I will go down to the very bottom here, twist off the extra stuff. And then of course you wanna smack the mint other people will smack it against the glass, rub it against the, the rim. Some people will crush it. You know, all the techniques that we learned about. I just like to smack it like that and then put it right in the back here. And then you just plant this little jungle right behind the island. Dude, how rad is that? We even put a little dude right in the back here, the Trader Vic's Menahuni from Hawaiian folklore. A Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour straw from Surfside Sips. If you're interested in one of those straws, go to surfsidesips.com, enter Breezeway in the coupon code, you'll get a little bit of a discount and you'll help support the show. And so from 1944 in Oakland, California, at Trader Vic's, this is the Mai Tai. Cheers. My, that might be one of the best Mai Tais I've ever had. I think it's the combination of rums. This is one of those drinks that you can change just by the different types of rums that you use. Now people all the time go, hey dude, I can't get Worthy Park where I am. I can't get Hamilton Rums where I am. I can't get, you can probably find Appleton. But people have been requesting that I go, uh, okay, here's a substitute rum. Here's a cheaper or easier rum to find if I don't have those rums in my direct periphery. So for this kind of cocktail, any kind of dark Jamaican rum will get you close. Karuba, Myers, stay away from the spiced rums. Otherwise the dark Jamaican will get you really close. You get all of the flavors of a normal Mai Tai. You get a little bit of that almond, you get lime juice certainly in front, and then the blend of rums do something really interesting. I think the Appleton has like a little bit of a sharper 
tang to it. Where is the worthy park? It's like this funky Jamaican pot still blended kind of molasses flavor to it. It really takes a Mai Tai kind of to the next level. Don't be afraid to experiment with Mai Tais. Try all kinds of stuff because the basic ingredients are there. Lime, orgeat, orange curacao, simple syrup, or rock candy syrup. And then any combination of dark Jamaican rums will get you into a very interesting place. If you do want to support the Breezeway Cocktail Hour, join our Patreon. I will send you this enamel pin. You'll get opportunities to buy merch before it goes on sale to the general public because it always sells out. And I used to do bloopers at the end of every episode and it, <laughs> that is fresh. <laughs> Jeez, like too much mint, <laughs> too much mint in the air. Those are now available to Patreon members only because the algorithm didn't like them. The majority of people didn't watch them, but I know a lot of you still love the bloopers. So that's where they went. Sorry that I had to do that, but we have to fund this thing somehow. Okay, are you ready for that tip about how to keep your mint looking like this all night long? And now for the secret tip that I promised you, there's nothing worse than like that mint that looks wilty and you just go, dude, it's last call, but the mint should still look good, right? Right, I have procured a little scorpion bowl filled with ice water. What you wanna do is take some of your mint, put it in there, leaf side down, and let it sit in there. Now what that's gonna do is it's gonna harden up the leaves, it's gonna get it prepared for a long night hanging out at the bar. I should try that before I go drink here. Dunk my head in an ice bath. You're gonna go ahead and let that sit there for about 10 to 15 minutes. And then, just go ahead and like, Get some of that off there. You can already see that the leaves are standing straight up. And then one of the tips that I've heard, I think I heard it from Martin Kate, is that you wanna cut the stems at about a 45 degree angle like you would for roses because the, uh, the ends were cauterized when they were clipped. So this will open them back up and then you can keep them in warm to hot water and they should last like this all night long. By contrast though, this is fresh out of the bag. This is the one that's been sitting in the hot water. Look at the difference in the, the leaf quality. The leaves look over here kind of wilty, not as like crisp and fanned out. I'll twist off the bottoms and just plant this right here. Okay, nice little bunch. I hope you'll try that tip at home. Let me know in the comments below if you do and what you think about it. Folks, if you enjoyed this or at least found it helpful or informative, please be sure to hit that like button or subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. It's free to do so. Free content. The alternative to you not hitting the subscribe button is you have to buy me a commercial tiki bar. I don't make the rules.